Live from Hazard, Kentucky, this is Jamin Johns Wrestling News. Here's your news for New Year's Eve 2018. Over the weekend, WWE sent out a tweet which showcased accomplishments of women in the company during 2018. Nia Jax responded to the tweet, which only included white women, with a we here to hashtag and included facial emojis of women of different colors. It's also worth noting that Ty Dillinger commented on the tweet and appeared to indirectly reference Nia Jax. Ty Dillinger tweeted, All the WWE ladies had a great year, but these ones had some very captivating moments in 2018. And, if you're all boo-boo face about being left off the list despite being on TV all the time, maybe spend more time on the craft instead of social media. Congratulations, ladies. Also, the drama does not stop there. NXT superstar Johnny Gargano issued the following statement on Facebook regarding fans that are negative about wrestling on social media. Johnny Gargano tweeted those same exact statements from Facebook on his Twitter account. This is what he said. There's extreme irony in the fact that a lot of us were talked down to and called names for being wrestling fans when we were younger. Only to grow up, achieve our dreams of becoming pro wrestlers just to be talked down to and called names by utter wrestling fans? Everyone is entitled to their own opinion, but let's remember that we're all human beings. We are all fans of this crazy world of pro wrestling. We as a whole are better than toxic negativity on social media. My hope for everyone in 2019, man or woman, just be a good dude. And in relation to wrestling fans, during a recent appearance on Jim Ross's podcast, Bully Ray talked about WWE insulting the intelligence of fans with booking decisions. Bully Ray said, There are so many things that don't make sense, and when I watch, I try to watch as the professional, but I also try to watch as the fan because then I have to talk about it on Busted Open Radio, and the things that don't make sense I find are often insulting my intelligence. And I'm wondering if other people feel that way. Does the 13-year-old in Sheboygan, Wisconsin really know whether his intelligence is being insulted? No. But the 40-year-old man in New York, New York, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and Chicago, Illinois, knows that it is. However, when WWE looks at its numbers, JR, I think that everything is pointed in a positive direction for them. So why should they change their product? Thanks to WrestlingInc.com for the quote. Also, China's mother Jan LeQuay posted the following on her Facebook page. As many of you know, yesterday would have been Joanne's birthday. I truly appreciate all of the messages and remembrances of her that were posted by so many of you. As you can imagine, it's always a very sad day for me. But it helps a lot to know how many people remember her and loved her. It's one of the worst things in the world to lose a child. We have to get her in the WWE Hall of Fame. She richly deserves to be there. WWE, listen up and do what's right for China. You owe her that for what she did for you and women's wrestling. She earned her place there, and it's long overdue. Also, Sean X-Pac Waltman shared a similar statement on Twitter by saying, It's Joanne's birthday, and I was just thinking of all the remarkable things she did. She was the magic ingredient in the DX recipe, Intercontinental Champion, wrestled Chono in the Tokyo Dome for New Japan Pro Wrestling. She was an amazing woman. I hope one day she's honored before WrestleMania soon. It just seems like the right time. And I'm for that too. I would love to see China in the WWE Hall of Fame. She definitely deserves it. And with all the backlash in professional wrestling right now, it doesn't stop because Seth Rollins is also in some hot water. Seth Rollins went on Twitter and defended Louis C.K. Now, For those of you who don't know, Louis C.K. is in some huge, huge, huge hot water because he recently done a comedy show and he made some very controversial statements about school shooting survivors and it is getting a lot of traction, of course, as you know, and a lot of heat from a lot of people on the internet. So a person by the name of Eric, whose Twitter handle is Eric is PBIC, tweeted, man, F. Lewis C.K. Got to keep it PG here. Seth Rollins replied back and said, Nah, come on, dog. Eric said, He keeps disappointing me. Seth Rollins said, The new leak bit is funny, just like all his other stand-up in the past. Eric said, I've liked, loved this past stuff, but this, I actually cringed. Seth Rollins replied back by saying, Out of curiosity, what's different this time around for you? 
He's always made highly offensive jokes, even going as far as to use slurs in some bits. And as soon as Seth Rollins defended Louis C.K., he started getting a barrage of tweets from fans of his that was saying, Come on, Seth, don't do this. I liked you, man. Why are you acting like this? Come on, don't do this. So he's getting a lot of heat from wrestling fans online, and it's actually still continuing on his Twitter account. Uh, so want to pass that along. It's not on NoDQ.com or I don't think a lot of wrestling dirt sheets, but Seth Rollins is in some hot water from wrestling fans on Twitter. They're going after him for defending Louis C.K. So it's a crazy New Year's Eve with the drama between Nia Jax and Ty Dillinger and now Seth Rollins. I mean, man. Speaking of Seth Rollins, though, in a recent interview with Fox 2 News, Seth Rollins provided an update on Roman Reigns' battle with leukemia. Seth Rollins said, Roman's doing great. Obviously, he spent the holiday home with his family and he's doing really good. He's in a good position. He's primed to make a comeback, hopefully sometime sooner rather than later. But at the end of the day, he's just focused on getting healthy right now. I will say he's in good, good spirits. Thanks to WrestleZone.com for the quote. During a recent Facebook interview, John Cena commented on his return and once again noted that he will be leaving to shoot his next movie, on January 20th. John Cena said, It's awesome. It's the best. This is inside baseball, but there are some inside baseball folks out there, so I filmed a movie in China that ended shortly after Thanksgiving, and I landed in America and started global promotion for Bumblebee a day and a half later. So I went to Berlin, and I went to the UK, and I went to Hong Kong, and then I went to China, pretty much going all over and finished that four days before Christmas, right when Bumblebee came out. I had a choice to make and a choice WWE was totally cool with. I'm very fortunate to be able to shoot my next project in Vancouver on January 20th and they said, well, you've been working hard. Why don't you just take a month to breathe and then do this movie and show up after the movie's done? I said, I could do that or I could come back to WWE. So starting December 26th at Madison Square Garden, I was able to return to a WWE ring and tonight we're here in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania and we're able to do the same thing. I'll be in Tampa, Florida live tomorrow night performing in a WWE ring as well, and then next week I'm going to switch. I have no brand allegiance. It's going to be Raw, and the week after that it will be Raw, and as soon as Raw is done, I'll head to Canada and hopefully start something else. But I made a promise to the WWE Universe that I would never leave, and I know it's really difficult to understand because I'm not there every week, and it truly breaks my heart. But there are some wonderful opportunities, and with those opportunities come more acceptance from the world of what you do here in WWE. And if you listen to anything I say to anyone, first and foremost is what I do here, because what I do here is what I love, and I'm so very proud of WWE. John Cena continued on by saying, Each day that goes by, WWE is gaining more and more respect from outside critics who have thought maybe it is the only one thing, and that's that. I'm really appreciative to everybody opening up their minds to what we do because I believe what we do is put smiles on people's faces and I just saw it tonight and will go back out there and see it. So instead of taking a month and kicking my feet up and cracking open a nice can of red wine and enjoying that, I wanted to come to WWE. It's no secret. I've invested my life here for 16 years and this is my life and this is my family. It's cool to see everybody backstage, but it's going to be extra cool to see people out there, so I'm super stoked about it. Thanks to WrestleZone.com for the transcription. At the UFC 232 post-fight press conference, Dana White was asked if there are still plans for Brock Lesnar to fight Daniel Cormay in early 2019. Dana White said, Absolutely. I think he's already under contract with me. We were talking about it, and then he ended up signing a new deal with WWE. What I think happens is that he's in a very unique position because he can play this thing between UFC and WWE. They get right down to the wire, and I think Vince throws so much money at him and he goes, all right, I'll do it again. Because this is here no matter what. When he's ready, he can come in here and fight, and he's going to make a crap load of money here too. So it makes sense. I assume that's what's going on. Thanks to WrestleZone.com for the quote. And finally, here on Jam & John's Wrestling News, WWE's Instagram account published a list of the company's top five best matches for 2018. And now we're going to count them down right here. Here are the top five best matches for 2018, according to the WWE. 
Number five, Seth Rollins versus The Miz at Backlash. Number four, Mustache Mountain versus The Undisputed Era, NXT, July 11th, 2018. Number three, Brock Lesnar versus Daniel Bryan, Survivor Series. Number two, Johnny Gargano versus Tommaso Ciampa, NXT TakeOver Chicago. And the number one match of 2018, according to the WWE, Becky Lynch versus Charlotte Flair, Evolution. I'm really surprised that Johnny Gargano versus Andre Cien Almas was not in that top five. And of course, as you know, a lot of fans are not happy with this top five list. That is your news for New Year's Eve 2018. Check back here tomorrow on New Year's Day, the first day of 2019, for another Jam and John's Wrestling News Flash Briefing on Amazon Alexa devices, Spotify, YouTube, Stitcher, and iTunes. From me, Jam and John, I want to wish all my listeners, my Patreon subscribers, a safe and happy 2019. I hope that 2019 is your best year yet. I really hope it is for my sake too, because 2018, honest to God, was the worst year of my life. Everything that went wrong did go wrong. And so I really hope 2019 is a lot better. Just like the Counting Crows song along December, maybe this year will be better than last. Follow me on Twitter at John Caldwell, J-O-N-C-O-L-W-E-L-L. Follow me on Instagram, The Jam and John. If you'd like to sponsor Jam and John's Wrestling News or your wrestling promotion wanting to get your next big event out, you can email me, jzcaldwell at gmail.com. That's J-Z-C-O-L-W-E-L-L at gmail.com. Big shout out to Ryan Hurdle and Tony Nelson for subscribing to my Patreon. You too can subscribe to me by going to patreon.com slash John. I have free packages on there, ranging from free to $7. Not a whole lot of money. I would really appreciate it if you supported me a little bit financially. Once again, that's patreon.com slash John. This is Jamin' John saying thanks, goodbye, and have a happy new year, everybody. <laughs>